Hi, welcome to this, which is the first of a series of videos within which we will be exploring a relatively simple uh, Android game engine, one that's suitable for creating 2D games within Android. In the grand scale of things, this is a simple game engine, but um, if you're new to Android or new to games creation, hopefully it'll, it'll give you a bit of a useful insight. It's uh, part of a university course, so this is one of the elements within the course that we use to actually um, help uh, students develop their programming skills. And the purpose of this video is really just to set out at a high level a little bit of context around this, uh, context around the course, context around the series. Um, you can download Gage. Uh, there'll be a link in the, the video comments uh, to Git page where you can pull down your own particular copy of it. You're free to use it in any particular way that you want uh, to do so. So in terms of the course itself, now I, I'm not going to give you a lot of information on this because the, the videos of this are, are, are available. Uh, in essence, it's a second year course. Uh, the emphasis on the course is really on developing programming skills, software development skills. Um, we use Android uh, as our particular platform that we're going to develop our programming skills within and games development as, as the specific context. And we'll do this here because, well, why do we use games? Simple reason ties into what the course is about. Games are fun. And if you want to learn how to program, there's not really a lot of merit in sitting in lectures and listening and reading to things. It's useful enough, but it's much, much more useful basically to, to get your, uh, you know, to get involved with coding, to practice it. So people learn things by doing them, by practicing them, by getting better. And by doing something like a game, it's actually quite an enjoyable process and way of, uh, of doing this. All of the, the course material is available online, so um, you can go and have a look at that if you want to. In terms of this particular module, uh, and the reason why we we're, we're sort of have a, a, a simple game engine available, it's split up into a number of sprints. Um, generally three weeks long for each of the sprints, it's a bit longer than you would have in a, a normal uh, software development environment. Inside the sprints, uh, the student teams, they have an opportunity then to set out what they want to achieve in those sprints and then at the end of it, hopefully to have new code that does set out the things that they wanted to do. Um, the way the course is set up, in the first couple of sprints, uh, I'll be providing all of the teams with a set of user stories, things that um, the, the team can pick that they want to do within that particular sprint. Uh, I provide those really by way of giving a little bit of context and making sure everybody's going roughly in the same direction. Alongside that period during the course, the students will be in each of their teams developing their own ideas. And then in the later sprints, uh, getting onto the sort of second half of the module, that's up to the teams to decide what exactly they want to do within those sprints by way of uh, enabling and creating their particular uh, game. Now, we provide uh, some example code gauge uh, as a way of actually getting this process going. It's giving people a starting point. So they don't have to do things from scratch. So if I show you gauge, um, it's a project within Android Studio. It's opened up here. In essence, it's just a, a bunch of classes that uh, do a bunch of different things. And in the second video in the series, we'll break this down in terms of the type of, of functionality that it offers. So. In essence, set of classes, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can make use of these particular ones. Uh, there is actually some sort of example um, demos uh, alongside this as well. And if I actually run this, so I'll, I'll trigger the thing off. I'll have a emulator running in the background. Emulator then is being triggered up. So this is, is gauge notionally running. So the types of things that you get with this, so just to go through this, I've got four icons here. We can click on this one over here. It takes us through to a second page. So type things that Gage do, if you click on input, it'll be able to deal with touch-based inputs. So there's some classes inside this here that if you're interacting with the screen or if you do a long press or things like that, will be able to, to collect that information. So that's useful for a touch-based game. Uh, other activities are assets. So there, 
in terms of loading in bitmaps or loading in fonts or sounds or things like this, again, some of the code that's available will help with that particular process. Layers. Uh, so this actually ties into how we structure a game. So you may have a main menu, you could have setting screens, you could different levels within your game. It's one way of chopping it up. So some of the code in here is about game screens where you can have different screens, you can navigate between them, you can share information between them. And it sort of gives you an illustration. So it, it helps you break up your game into more uh, manageable chunks. Entities. Um, so you can have some entities which are sort of static entities that don't really move. You can have other entities that do move and interact with it. Uh, so again, there's starting points there that you can build upon and extend by way of whatever objects you'll have within your particular game. Viewports. Now, different ways of looking at viewports. One, a viewport is, is a window into a bigger world. And sometimes your game world is going to be much bigger and you only see one bit of it at a point in time. That's just fine is also quite relevant to mobile devices. So depending if you're running on a phone or on a tablet, it may have a different pixel density, screen size, aspect ratio. And viewports give us a way of standardizing and mapping from one of these to, to another. And again, there's some classes available that will help with that process. Uh, animation, um, and again, it depends upon the type of game whether or not you need this type of animation as to just moving objects, but there's some classes there that help out with that as well. Uh, go back to the main menu, there's a few other ones as well. So there's a sort of a demo here where if I click, I can move around. You have sort of a flying object, a few other objects going around. A particle system associated with this here. You have a little bit of, of AI in terms of other ships that are, are trying to, to navigate and fly around too. And the final one, I click here, is just simply a simple platform style game where some platforms randomly uh, generated and you can sort of move around uh, and interact with those ones. Um, there's a third option here, which is kind of the card based one, but that's blank because that ties into the, the sort of the genre of a uh, of, of project that the students are going to be asked to create within their team. So it's kind of a placeholder for whatever they want to add in to that particular point. So that's, in essence, that's what all of this code provides you, uh, so to speak, out of the box. Um, is there, so you can build upon it, you can use it, you can extend it, you can modify it. And if we go back to, to what we'll be looking at in this uh, series of videos. So the purpose of the series of videos is really to give a bit of insight into some of the design decisions and some of the implementation of the code that's just been highlighted there. So my assumption is that if you're using this, You'll want to go through, look at the videos, I'll give you a bit of an insight, you'll be looking at the code base, you may occasionally refer uh, back between them. Uh, but the things that we will be looking at, so the next one will we'll identify some of the architectural decisions. These are high level decisions. Uh, there's lots of different Android ways you can structure an Android program. There's lots of different ways you can structure a game engine, a simple one. Uh, so this sets out some of the particular decisions that were made here to provide this type of game engine running um, this type of Android setup. Uh, the uh, videos after that will have a look then at how do we actually deal with drawing graphics and drawing them quickly to the screen. We'll look at input handling, how we can get touch input of different types of multi-touch, of accelerometers, of things along those lines. We'll look at assets about bitmaps and music and how we can load those in and manage those assets. A little bit of screen management, so how we chop up our game at that high level. A bit about game objects, about, well, at a lower level, what type of objects do we have within our game? What can they do? Uh, viewports, we'll look at animation, we'll look at particle systems, we'll, we'll do some things like collision detection and steering behaviour. Basically, giving you a bit of a breakdown as to the functionality that we just saw. The final couple of videos in the series, we're going to show some example user story implementation. Um, now I said that in, in the early sprints in the project, I'll be providing a set of user stories that I'm going to look for each team to implement. And I can, um, I can actually show you um, well, last year's uh, user stories. So the sprints will, will have a backlog. 
And inside this here is going to be a number of different stories that will ask you to take the existing functionality and to extend it in different ways. Some of these are quite simple, some of them are a little bit more challenging. And each team will pick up a number of these and then implement them. Uh, so by way of giving you a, a bit of context, we'll, 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 I'll record myself doing a few of these user stories so you can see a bit about the process whereby you take a high level story, you break it down, you think about what does this mean in terms of a design aspect, what does it mean in terms of an implementation aspect, uh, just by showing you how this you might want to do this. Tying the whole thing together then, just by way of some key takeaways for this. So Gage itself, it, it's simply there as a framework. You're free to use in any way you want to. Um, it's meant to help you with your process of creating uh, 2D Android uh, games. We'll be using it within the course in early sprints, just really to build up your familiarity. So it'll be quite directed in terms of, I'll be providing you with user stories. You do the ones you want to do. And in later sprints, um, I'm assuming you'll be building on top of this so that the particular game that you've designed, the card game, you'll be able to bring that then to, uh, to life. And so in later sprints, you'll be developing your own ideas. So that, that covers everything we want to do out here. I said, next video in the series, we're gonna have a look at the high level architecture in terms of this as an Android app, and also this as a simple game engine.